Hi, this is Jim Gibson with uh, CableSupply.com and today I'm going to introduce a new series and it's called The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly when it comes to data closets, data rooms, wiring closets, uh, data centers. And uh, we have one installment now. This is the first installment in the series. The series is not going to necessarily be on a regular basis. It's whenever I can get into a data closet that the owner allows me to videotape. So uh, whenever I have them, I'll put them up online. We'll put them under this playlist. If you like this stuff, uh, give me a thumbs up. Comment on it. I need some comments. And also, uh, please, uh, uh, subscribe. I need more subscribers. Thank you for watching, and you have a great day. Okay, so let's look at this uh, room again one more time. It's always good to have the extra ladders working for you. And uh, let's look at the back of this data rack. It's called a data rack. It's, it's an I-beam. It has a little foot at the bottom and a little header at the top. And it's an I-beam and you can attach all your uh, stuff to it and there's a bunch of patch cords and patch panels there. And of course you got some Cisco, old Cisco uh, switches, but hey, still work. But they are switches, I don't see any routers. And then some Time Warner telephone company equipment there. So to make a long story short, let's start at the beginning. There's your backboard, and that's called a backboard, and mostly it was used in the past for phone company use, and that's your backboard. And then here is your phone company stuff that comes in from outside, and that's the, the cable right there that they use, a big black cable comes up. Now the orange cable is, is um, fiber optics. Uh, it's con that's not a cable, that's a conduit. It's an orange conduit um, that you put the fiber optic cable in. And I'm trying to think of the name that they use for this conduit. And of course, um, the phone company uh, does these things here. Those little black and red things. Red means it's data, and the black means it's analog. And they are actually plugs that plug in and they are um, protectors for uh, lightning protectors things like that notice all the systems are grounded there's some really nice grounding going on here you can see it right there and uh, so the phone companies this is their responsibility they call it the MPO minimum point of entry okay that's what MPO stands for and then of course over here what you have is you have your D mark. So anytime you see these orange things, uh, covers on a 66 block, this is just a regular 66 block. You put these covers on and that's called the D mark, um, demarcation. And what happens is on one side is the phone company's responsibility. On the other side is the responsibility of the um, customer. So what will happen is, is uh, you come out here and it's, man, Peck Bell, they're not even, haven't been around for years. This is an old backboard. Um, they have these little clips on there, those uh, bridge clips. And those, they'll pull that bridge clip off and they'll put what's called the butt set on their side. And they'll test back to, the, uh, uh, to their office to make sure that the office has got what, what is needed. And so um, that's what they'll do there. And, uh, and if they pull off the bridge clip and the problem goes away, if there's a short, if there's static, if there's noise, if there's things like that, and the noise is coming from this direction, then it's your responsibility as a customer. If it comes from that direction, or there's no dial tone coming from that direction, it's a phone company. Again, called the demark, demarcation. Um, that uh, separates the responsibility of the phone company from the customer. And again, this is really old because there's Peck Bell. Interduct, that's what it's called, I remember it now. It's an, they, even though it's conduit in effect, it's called an interduct when you use it for fiber optics. And here's a white one. I've not seen a, very much as a white one before, but I mean, that's what they do these days. 
and it actually says fiber optic communications and it is a white a white one so this is a backboard and it's not you see all these wires are called cross connect cables and uh, you know they go from one side and then they go down and they go out to the phones or something like that that's out there uh, in the office area and it doesn't matter what color these things are uh, it does matter putting in the white up first and then the, the whatever color you use next it could be multiple colors doesn't matter um, people use different colors and there are some cross connect cable just sitting there a uh, phone company probably brought it there because they do a lot of work here and they're just going to leave it uh, things like that uh, of course at the bottom you got what's called uh, uh, cable management and that's the name of these cable managements are called mushrooms it's probably a slang uh, for those and all this are 66 blocks as you see here so these are all 66 blocks and uh, this is all the standoff cable and so uh, I'm sorry not standoff cable standoff brackets so 66 block actually pushes right in there and uh, they're already lined up perfectly lined up ready to go for the next 66 block that's needed this is pretty sloppy stuff in here who's ever been in charge of this hasn't done anything uh, or hasn't had a standard to follow especially when you have 110 power running next to low voltage that's probably um, not according to code and that could probably get them in trouble uh, here they got an extension cord all wound up in the ground someone can trip over it there's a lot of uh, code violations here. I don't know where that one goes. Looks like it goes over to the equipment. Unacceptable if that's what they're doing here. Now the next thing I see is I see a mess. A mess of wires. Look at these wires, man. I mean you just don't punch down cable like that. That's that that you're you're not gonna get the bandwidth that you need if you punch down the cable. So and you know here at the same time you got they paid a lot of money for that Hubble. Um, the name and and to me there's no need for that they should have put the effort into the cable and the cable quality and the patch cord things like that these are just pieces of plastic that I'm sure they paid a lot of money for and again this uh, thing it's sitting in is called a data rack and it comes in a kit all those bars there that bar there and of course the side uh, bars here um, the I-beams. It's made out of really heavy aluminum. I mean, you can't bend, bend or break these things. Um, and uh, that data rack is something that you would get from, uh, you buy as a kit. You don't buy these individually. And they bolt to the floor. It's always best to bolt them to the floor. And then it's good to have this uh, ladder, uh, uh, cable ladder going across to stabilize it from from going to the right or to the left in an earthquake or whatever else someone runs into it or, or a cart runs into it or whatever. And so it, it's kind of messy here. Yeah, kind of messy. It really is messy. So it's not the worst I've ever seen, but it's far from uh, the best I've ever seen too. So someone probably doesn't have a, one person doesn't have responsibility for this data room. So that's why it looks like it does. And, uh, you know, it doesn't look good. <laughs> of course, you look over here and you look up into the ceiling and it has all that gobbledygook. Sure does have that ladder, uh, cable ladder in place and that's bolted to the wall. It really looks nice. Someone, someone who did that knew what they were doing and you can see all the, uh, the green cable, usually green cable like that, solid green cable or stranded green cable, thick like that that's that's your ground so they they were right by grounding all this stuff which they should they should ground it now when you see cable like this that orange cable that's your fiber optic distribution box uh, right there and uh, uh, there's equipment in there too I don't know what they're they're doing but there's equipment in there also so that orange thing is your fiber optic cable uh, coming down and uh, it's actually attached to the switch and so uh, this is probably going to a switch somewhere else uh, maybe to uh, uh, what I could see Time Warner here I, I don't know how it's exactly hooked up uh, but it is hooked up uh, to something like that now usually when you see the orange um, 
uh, 110 outlets and that usually means it's an isolated circuit um, and uh, you know it's nice to have over here you have a uh, you have a copper rod and it's used for attaching to uh, things you want to ground so that's your that's your um, community ground all the ground wires are going there there's your green wire again it's going to go there and it's going to provide ground uh, uh, access for uh, for um, all your devices everything else and you can see the yellow interduct and the white interduct again I have not seen white used but it doesn't matter if you look real close you can see the orange cable inside it uh, the caution you don't want to cut into that because it's expensive uh, to repair not as hard as some people say it is but it's expensive so you got a lot of um, you got a lot of uh, fiber optics in here for a small building anyway there's another uh, um, quad plug 110 isolated you got some old equipment in here that's not used this looks like E&M uh, lines and EM lines are very very old and they used to attach one building to another building or something like that and actually e and you're going to laugh at this but e and stands for ear and mouth and uh, so you had these lines that were dedicated circuits that the phone company really charged a lot of money and it looks like there's still some on I don't know if they're in use I don't see the flashing sometimes you walk into a uh, a uh, phone room and what you see is you see a lot of old junk that no one has ever unplugged so you know you got to uh, keep track if you're a good IT person and you're responsible for a phone room then you'll spot things like this and uh, you'll make sure that the old equipment is deinstalled at the proper time or else you're gonna have someone else say what in the world is that equipment I have no idea when you look at the back of this um, of these switches you see how they have a backbone uh, at least these two switches have the backbone uh, where the cable comes out it comes around and it goes in and this means that these two switches here act as one so if you program one it automatically programs the other you don't have to individually program each one and if you notice it looks like there's a fiber optic cable that goes in here so that's going somewhere else I don't know where um, this is not my phone room I would be embarrassed about this one if it was. It's it's a disaster. It's just a disaster. But uh, I'm out here with Tech Data. This is their first time being here, and one of their jobs is to clean things up like this. So they're going to do a really good job. They're a great company here in San Diego. If you need cabling done, they're professionals, and they will do a great job for you. So I think we covered everything in here. A lot of old, old, old phone company equipment. It's probably not used anymore. You always got to watch when you pull out things that aren't used anymore. I remember one of my technicians was up in the ceiling doing some work and the customer said to him, hey, that extra cable up there, that's not going anywhere. Why don't you just cut that and bring it down? Well, he did it, which I would tell him not to do things like that, but he did it anyway. And uh, then of course I got a call uh, the next day from a company in the same building and said, hey, um, our phones aren't working. They work fine until your guy showed up. So I had to go down and we had to recable. So I know it sounds rude, uh, but when someone tells you, hey, can you cut that cable sitting up there? You don't want to do that unless you know where that cable's going. So you need to say no. Um, if you're paid to do demo, that's a different story. But generally speaking, if you're just pulling one cable and someone tells you to cut that old cable up there, I mean, why? Who cares? It's up in the ceiling. No one's going to see it doesn't matter it might be a good pull string for some future pull or if it's in use and you cut that cable then you own that cable you're gonna have to go back and fix it um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else in here I think I already talked about the MPO minimum point of entry and the DMARC and the difference between the two and of course the cable that's sitting there that feeds them that's all the phone company's responsibility and sometimes the phone company slacks off. You know, you call up and you say, hey, I got a problem with the circuit. And they say, oh, it's your, your responsibility, your fault. You go get your vendor out there and prove that it's not working. Um, well, I don't know. When I deal with the phone company, I'm sitting there saying, no, you come out. That's your system too. That's not just mine, it's yours. 
and the customer, uh, I had to go out a couple times to prove to the phone company that we were fine on our side, it was their side. And they, uh, they paid, they actually paid the customer for uh, my cost. And so sometimes it's a give and take, you know, it's a, it's a back and forth on this. So just to make a long story short, uh, uh, you know, the, the phone company has responsibilities and you have responsibilities. And so you have to uh, um, negotiate with them. And in fact, I would get both your vendor out there and the phone company uh, to make sure that uh, this thing gets fixed and no one leaves until it's fixed and the one can prove to the other um, you know who's, whose fault it is either the dial tone's not coming in the building or the dial tone's coming in the building but not going to uh, the device or the circuits coming in the building are not going to the device easy to check no problem but if you're the technician the, the non-phone company technician you deserve to get paid and on top of that, uh, the customer, if it's not your fault, the customer can ask for a reimbursement from the phone company. And when the customers have done that in my situation, the phone company has reimbursed them for the cost of the vendor. So, um, uh, you know, just remember that, that uh, you can be called up sometimes uh, to verify that the circuit you put in works.